So, we can't afford to wait. We can't wait to fix our schools. We can't wait to fix our health care system. We cannot wait to provide good jobs and good wages to Americans. We can't wait to free ourselves from our dependence on foreign oil. We can't wait to bring this war in Iraq to a close. We cannot wait. And that's why I'm running for President of the United States of America. But I'm also running because of you. I'm running because I made a bet on the American people. I believed that the American people were tired of a politics that is all about tearing each other down instead of lifting the country up. I was betting that the American people wanted an honest conversation with their elected officials, that they were tired of spin and PR. And I believed that change in America doesn't happen from the top down, it happens from the bottom up. I learned that as a community organizer, working on the south side of Chicago in the shadow of steel mills that had closed back in the mid-80s. And I worked with churches to set up job training programs for the unemployed and after-school programs for youth. And it was hard work, but it was the best education I ever had because it taught me ordinary people can do extraordinary things when they are given an opportunity, when they are working together, when they're unified. And so at the beginning of this campaign, I thought to myself, you know, if we can all just come together, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, young, old, rich, poor, if we can tap into the decency of the American people and the generosity of the American people and the common sense of the American people and challenge the special interests that have come to dominate Washington, but also challenge ourselves to be better, to be better parents and better neighbors and better citizens, then I believe there was no problem we could not solve and no destiny we could not fulfill. And I'm here to report that after 15 months, after traveling to 47 states, after talking to hundreds of thousands of people and shaking tens of thousands of hands and probably hundreds of thousands of hands now, and after, after kissing hundreds of babies, I'm going to kiss that one right there. That's, that's a cute one there. Well, not right now, not right now. Wait till afterwards. <laughs> They're going to start passing the baby up. Anyway, the... Uh, after all that time, I am here to report that my bet's paid off and my faith in the American people has been vindicated because all across the country, the American people are standing up and saying, yes, we are. Yes, we are ready for change. Yes, we are ready to turn the page. Yes, we want to write a new chapter in American history and we're going to start right here in South Bend, Indiana. People are ready for change because they understand that it's not enough just to change political parties in the White House. We're going to have to change how politics is done in Washington. Now this is, this is a difference that I have with Senator Clinton. Senator Clinton's a capable, smart person, but she doesn't seem to see a problem with the dominance of lobbyists and special interests in Washington. But if you think about the problems that we're facing, most of the problems are not because we don't have some good answers. I mean, on health care, we've been talking about health care for decades now. Every four years, somebody comes up with a plan to fix the health care system. But nothing ever happens. Why is that? It's because the drug and the insurance companies spent a billion dollars over the last 10 years preventing change from happening, blocking reform. So if we don't change how Washington works, we won't change how health care works. The same is true on energy. 
We've been talking about, you know, energy problems since 1973, since OPEC and the gas line, since I was 12 years old. But the only thing that's changed is gas prices have hit record highs, and ExxonMobil made $11 billion last quarter. Why is that? Well, you know, it, it started when uh, Bush, it helps when you understand that Bush put Cheney in charge of energy policy. So then Cheney, Cheney met with the environmental groups once, the renewable energy groups once, he met with the oil and gas companies 40 times. So is it any surprise then that the laws coming out of Washington are very good for ExxonMobil, they're not so good for you? So if we're really going to change how Washington works, we're going to have to make sure that the lobbyists and the special interests aren't calling the tune. And that's why early in this campaign I said I will not take PAC money, I won't take money from federal registered lobbyists. Because I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure that I was accountable to you, the American people. I want to make sure that should I be fortunate enough to end up as president, that, that, that I'm taking your voice into the White House, that I'm taking the voice of the young woman I met who works full time on a night shift, then goes to school during the day and is supporting a sister with cerebral palsy. She gets three hours of sleep a night. But she's not unusual, and she's determined to succeed, and I want to help her succeed. She doesn't want government to give her a handout. She just wants a little help financing her education and making sure that her sister gets decent health care. That's not too much to ask. I want to carry into the White House the voices of all those workers who've seen their jobs shipped overseas. They don't just lose their job, they lose their pension, they lose their health care. Suddenly they're competing with their teenage kids for jobs paying seven bucks an hour at the local Walmart. I want to carry the voices of veterans. Those young men and women who serve on behalf of this country and are still thinking about the buddies they left behind. And some, some came home with post-traumatic stress disorder and haven't gotten treated. And some are waiting to get their disability payments. And, some didn't come back, like the young man whose mother gave me this bracelet to remember him by after he died in a roadside bomb. I want your voices in my ear as your president. And we can accomplish that in this election if we all work hard and if we understand the nature of the change that has to happen. See, if you are ready for real change, not just a change in parties, then we can go ahead and tell those lobbyists their days of sending the agenda in Washington are over because they have not funded my campaign, they will not run our White House, and they will not drown out the voices of the American people when I'm President of the United States of America. If you're ready for change, then we can stop talking about the health care crisis and start doing something about it. I've put forward a plan that says, if you've already got health care, we're going to lower your premiums by $2,500 per family per year. If you don't have health care, you'll be able to buy into a government plan that is similar to the plan I have as a member of Congress. You won't be excluded for pre-existing conditions. You will not be, you will not be rejected because, uh, because you've gotten sick before. You're not going to be rejected because you can't afford to pay because we will subsidize you on a sliding scale. We're going to emphasize prevention so we've got a health care system instead of a disease care system. And we won't wait 20 years from now to do it or 10 years from now to do it. We're going to do it by the end of my first term as President of the United States of America.